So in this video, we're going to talk about Oxley uh, and how I believe that at the moment, at these prices, I think Oxley is slightly undervalued compared to his peers. At least that's my opinion. Uh, of course, of course, it can go down lower. There's always a possibility that stocks can go lower. But uh, right now, the company has a total market cap of $363 million dollars. A share structure of about 338 million shares listed uh, so it the, the, the company is quite dilutive but I believe that the company should be worth at least you know long term at least one billion dollars if not more uh, we'll be talking about in this video and I think 363 is kind of undervaluing the company but again all my opinion so Let's talk about it. Uh, of course, so I do have a position in Oxley, uh, and I'm making a video because I need content. I don't know how well Ox and dedicated Oxley video would do. I don't think there might be some. You know, if the views are high, that means that there's a lot of interest in Oxley. If the views are low, then most of the people on my channel are on only care about Roar. So we'll see what happens uh, with this, but I think that you know Oxley went as low as fifty three cents. If we look throughout the history of Oxley's chart, the lowest has ever been was around you know sixty. Basically, the lowest was right here was fifty four cents. So I don't believe you know I believe that you know there's a possibility it could go back to fifty four cents, but you know my the. But any lower it just creates an opportunity in my opinion. So let's look at Oxley's financials. So why I think it's undervalued. Uh, so first of all, it has 186 million dollars of cash, which is very very good. You know they did lose some cash from their previous quarter. Actually, December 31st, 2018, 211 million dollars, and this current quarter is 186. So. They've been maintaining the cash position, which is very good. And then if we look at uh, their, you know, long-term investment, which is twenty twenty million dollars, and their investment in joint venture is uh, another eighty-eight million dollars. And then they have property, which is you know fifty-five million dollars. So their total asset, uh, goodwill is not that bad, was thirty-four million dollars. Intangible assets is eighty-seven. That's kind of bad, but. Uh, five hundred and sixty-eight million dollars. Uh, if we look at the total shareholder equity, which is three hundred and five million dollars, but you gotta remember that they just converted this debenture, which I will get into later, which would bring the total equity up to around four hundred million dollars. So it's the balance sheet looks very good. Uh, almost. 60% of their market cap is made in cash, which is very good. And then they also have long-term investments and uh, joint joint venture investments. So these this is solid and property and plant equipment is also solid, a solid asset. So, you know, it's pretty good in my opinion. Um, and then if we look at the revenues, which is kind of bad. 1.5 million dollars ending September 30th 2019. I believe that this will jump up quite dramatically for MJ 2.0 because they are selling big time into MJ 2.0. Uh, you know, I think their revenues will jump up dramatically in the near future. Uh, but this is my opinion. Uh, you know. Out of, out, of, out of all the MJ companies, uh, it seems like Oxley is the most well-prepared. Well, besides Aurora, Oxley is the second most well-prepared for the uh, MJ 2.0 market, according to my research. Uh, under Dosecan for Ray is um, Oxley's uh, subsidiary. So Oxley, is out of, in the edible market, the chocolates and the mints, uh, it seems like Oxley is like the only one that actually have product on the shelf in the BC. As you can see right here, the dark chocolate sold out. Uh, I, I, you know, all the candy is sold out in BC. So it seems like they're doing very, very well 
in the edible market at the moment they are selling very well most of their vape products are selling out very well they are really well prepared for the edible market and i believe that moving forward uh when we when we look at the quarters in the in the coming not the next quarter but the quarter after the next quarter i think in the springtime quarter i think they will show some impressive numbers I think they are going to be their revenues are going to skyrocket to around twenty plus million dollars or even higher. Uh, they're going to show some impressive number and their margins are going to be awesome because the edible market mar margins are going to be very high because uh, you know that's what I think. I don't know for sure. We'll see how the edible market uh, pans out in the future. And then uh, you know, as I said earlier, Oxley. Uh, p repayment approximately 97% of the unsecured convertible de debenture due on September January 16, 2020. Uh, so they paid back $95 million or nine, almost $96 million of convertible debenture at a price of 0 0.74 cents per share and the stock price is trading at 57 cents per share so you are by buying it you are kind of buying a premium to what they converted the debenture by but again uh just because i think you know it's an opportunity here doesn't mean that the stock price cannot go down lower there's always a possibility i just think that this is probably near the bottom if it isn't the bottom already of course it can go down lower because if we looked uh not too long ago it was down 54 cents i think it went as low as 53 cents so if if it goes back to 53 cents or lower that would be an up that would definitely be an opportunity to scoop up some shares uh you know it's a good diversity i i like the company i you know i think it's well established company just my opinion uh, and then if we look at the chart of Oxley, yes, it's downtrending. So, you know, kind of catching a falling knife. But again, the MACD is showing us that it's starting to uptrend. We'll see what happens in the coming months. But I believe in the springtime. Uh, I mean, like, I wouldn't say, like, I would say in the springtime, it would definitely be higher than 57 cents when they announce earnings. But, you know. At the end of the day, I don't know if it can drop down lower. Uh, if it goes back to 53 cents, that definitely is a buying opportunity, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the coming quarters. And then also, they have a 15% investment in Inner Spirits holding. Uh, with the cash they have in hand, they could probably buy out the company. Uh, I, You know, that would make them vertically integrated, which would be very, very good. Uh, so those can like I said those can is the uh, producer that only produces oils and uh, and edible products they don't produce any dry bud but uh, those can is the basically it's located in Charlottetown PEI those can host a 42,000 square foot space dedicated to extraction quality testing researching and developing product information and manufacturing upon approval the facility will serve a hub for Oxley and its partner to develop manufacturing high margin value added products for medical and pending approved the adult use market. So yes, this one this was an update on December twenty first, two thousand eighteen. It's so it's been in business for a while and uh, this facility is focused on producing oils and edible products and like I said, out of all the licensed producers Aurora and uh, Oxley seems to be the most up to date when it comes to edible market, uh, the edible market, uh, and then Oxley also has uh, a partner with Imperial Brands. Imp uh, not too long ago, there was a news on December 17, two thousand nineteen, that Imperial Brand exercised a six point three five million common shares for a total of five point two million dollars. So Oxley got an additional $5.2 million. Uh, Imperial Brands continues to uh, support Oxley by maintaining 19.9% ownership for the company following initial investment of $123 million way of convertible debenture transaction announced on July 25th, 2019. So obviously they have a partner and Imperial Brands is also helping them with the edible market, especially in the vape pen market. 
Imperial Brand is a $24 billion company which pay dividends. They are, I believe, a, a British company uh, and uh, they are traded under the OTC in the United States. I'm surprised that they're not traded on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, you know, that, that kind of shocks me a little bit, but that's the way things roll sometimes. Now, you know, as I say, as I said, this is the uh, investor presentation. As you can see, portfolio cultivation asset exceeds supplies over 100,000 kilograms per annum, so they can produce at least 100,000 kilograms of uh, dry bud and you know they also have 300 acres of cultivation agreement for hemp farming uh in pei prince edward island expected to result in approximately 100,000 kilograms of hemp biomass for 2019 cultivation season focus on low cost cultivation including large outdoor hemp footprint in Ogaway ability to share best practices among subsidiaries and partners so, uh, you know, it's very good. 100,000 kilograms per annum is one of the top, uh, one of the top producers in uh, Canada. So that's, you know, that's a good sign. Uh, so, you know, this, these are some of the subsidiaries. Uh, they own, they own Robeson MJ, uh, Co Co Cobet Projects, and then they have a bunch of, uh, you know, investments in Delta 9, uh, Can TX, Lotus Ventures, Green Relief. Uh, these are, you know, you know, Sunset. So they, they, they have their hands in multiple uh, partnerships and streaming partners and uh, joint ventures. Uh, and in the future, you know, there's a possibility that these, these companies could just decide to merge with Oxley. Uh, and, be, and become one big giant company but uh, at the moment they're not but I believe that cons uh, I believe that in the future that these companies might get desperate and they might merge with Oxley but who knows we'll see what happens but ultimately I think Oxley is a pretty decent company uh, of course I think that the, there is a possibility the stock price could go down lower but the lower it goes, the more of an opportunity it becomes. Um, you know, I, like I said, f I believe fifty-three cents would serve a good opportunity, but you know that's my opinion. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this content. Give me a thumbs up; it helps my channel grow. Subscribe for future updates, and have a great day. Bye.